The London Printer Show with Michelle Carter. Hello, Londonpreneurs, and welcome to another episode of The Londonpreneur Show, where I interview a new entrepreneur every Monday and Friday. Listen in as they share their stories, their struggles, and their mistakes as the day in the life of an entrepreneur in London, Ontario, Canada. Today, my guest is Michelle Kaplan from CapCam Business Services. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit more about CapCan. Well, CapCan is uh, uh, business consulting and operational support for small business owners here in London and in fact across Canada. With the uh, technology of today, I can actually provide those services anywhere uh, in the country. And, but we, what we do is we focus on uh, working with small business owners to help them use their strengths and their passion and ensure they're spending time on revenue generating activities. Very good. And how long have you been in business? I've uh, been in business since September of 2012 and incorporated in April and went full-time in February of last year, so coming up on one year full-time. Congratulations. Thank you. So what made you think or what kind of started the uh, entrepreneurial journey for you? It was actually a need for myself at the time. Uh, I moved back to London for, uh, from Toronto for more personal reasons and knew that I was going to have a hard time uh, as London is a smaller market than the larger cities. And I recognized that I had an unusual growing up in corporate where I tended to work in small teams and did a variety of tasks and worked with a variety of different clients at any given time. And basically that wasn't a need in the market. So when I really sat back and thought about, do I want to give that up and work on just marketing or just sales or just accounting? I realized what I loved about what I've been doing for the past 15 years was the variety and the skill set that I can bring. So I basically looked at the market and the small business uh, community here in London and thought, can I bring what I've been doing with the larger companies I've been working with and make a business model that brings that and makes it accessible to small business owners? And through some market research and conversation, I found that the community here was very supportive of that idea and that it did in fact fill a great need in particular for those small business owners who could potentially use some administrative or operational support but couldn't either afford a full-time employee as of yet, didn't want to go the way of an employee, or wasn't feasible, they didn't have quite enough workload as of yet to make that make sense for their business. So I walk in and I help provide that support in addition to looking at their workflow and process and making things as efficient as possible so that they can keep as much on their own plate as they choose to while still making sure those tasks get done. Very nice. So what's kind of your five-year plan coming up? Well, I built Capkin uh, primarily for myself uh, with the idea that in the next few years I would actually also bring my mother into the field. Oh, really? Yeah, she's looking to semi-retire sometime in, I suspect, the next five years. And as I'm sure you can imagine, there are people out there who are not meant to fully retire. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> so my mother is one of those, and she and I share a lot of the same skill sets and philosophies when it comes to business. So what I wanted originally was to create something that was sustainable for myself and sustainable for her to work when she wanted to, not work when she didn't want to, but be able to do those things that she has a love and passion for. Mm -hmm. Since then, it's really grown in my own mind and just by organic interest in, in other people seeing what I'm doing. And I'm finding it's kind of growing into something I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. but that I'm open to. So I'm more and more thinking CapCan is become, going to become a bit of a larger entity than I originally intended with a full cycle business support team for small business owners. So whether someone needs IT support or whether someone needs sales training or even a sales staff, um, bookkeeping is already something that we offer. So you know, there's a variety of things that we feel that we can provide with the right people in place. and. I feel CapCan somewhat growing itself, and I'm just going to stay out of the way and see where it goes. Very good. Besides your mom, is there an, a, a number of employees that you plan to have in the next five years? You know, I don't, no? and I'm keeping that open only because uh, I want to stay fluid on the idea of that. Right now, I bring in subcontractors as necessary for certain expertise and resources, okay. and uh, that may continue. Uh, but if I find the right person that I feel really fits what CapCan's philosophy is all about, I'm more than open to the idea to build the team out and employment relationship. 
Very good. Is there something specific about the City of London that made you want to do business here? You know, I moved back to London. I did grow up here and okay. I was away for uh, eight years between two cities, Vancouver and Toronto, before I returned. And I did come back for more personal reasons. Mm -hmm. But when I really realized that I wanted to work with small business, it was very clear to me that London was the community that would be uh, open to that. There's a very strong community and it's a very significant community for a city uh, this size, in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot of people who have decided to leave the corporate world and do business for themselves, doing the thing that they love. And they need just the, the business support to help get them where they need to go. So, you know, I'm thrilled to be in London and doing this. Absolutely. So what's some of the things you might be struggling with in your business at this point? You know, it's funny. Everybody goes through cycles in their business, um, both personally and professionally. And, you know, some of the things that can happen, especially in your first year of business, if it's not growing as fast as you want it to, not mm. necessarily how fast it should grow, uh, you know, you suffer confidence moments, certainly. Okay. Um, and I think that uh, every small business owner has experienced that. And it's really important to have a support system around you who believes in you enough to believe for you when mm -hmm. necessary and to build you back up to where I think deep down we all know we have the ability, but things can creep in and change that and give a bit of a negative aspect. And so I lean on my support system when that's necessary, but you know, we all go through it. And I think it's important to just recognize it as truth and be okay with the fact that we sometimes lack confidence and need a little help. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't think I would go into business myself if I didn't find that fan or that support right exactly. off the bat. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. Is there some sort of mistakes that you've made that you'd like to share with the audience about things when you started out that you can save them? Sure, I think that um, the, the, the most typical thing that I see, and I certainly was uh, uh, one to fall for this, is don't devalue your service. Okay. When you're first getting into business for yourself, you might think I'm new and therefore I can't charge the per hour or the per, per you know dollar per product, whatever that is. Uh, I'm new and I, I need to go in at a lower rate until such time as X. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself as a premium brand right from the start. Really? I really believe that. Um, in fact, Sheila Cummins, uh, I, I took that, those words premium brand from her from the Londonpreneurs, uh, excuse me, London Mompreneurs Ignite Your Vision conference. Oh, yes, it was great. <laughs> it was a fantastic day and that really stuck with me because it's something that I believe in strongly but she put words to it for me so I appreciate that uh, uh, from her. If you are going to provide a discount to your services, mm -hmm. make sure that you're getting at least the equivalent back to your business. Do it in such a way that doesn't set a precedent that you then have to dig back out of. Mm -hmm. Set your fee to the value that you bring mm -hmm. and that your service brings to the marketplace. And it will work. I really truly believe that. And it's just about the message and it's about the market and it's about the confidence that you bring to ensure people understand that your service is worthy of that cost because you bring that service and you bring a certain expertise and experience that they don't have. Very good. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, Where can you. our viewers find more information about you? Oh, please visit my website at catcan.ca. Uh, I also have Facebook pages, LinkedIn and Twitter at catcanbusiness. Great, we'll be sure to link that in the show notes and I wanna thank you so much for watching.